The time has come and the best Rush Royale event is finally back this first day on April 25th. In this video, I'll show you how the random tournament works, my top five decks that I will be running, as well as my top 10 modifiers. So how does it work? All participants will be playing on equal conditions. The level of all units, heroes and items will be on the exact same level than your opponent, regardless of your account size. And don't be afraid to create a wrong deck, because you will always be able to change up your deck during each battle. Don't worry if you're missing out on some units or heroes, because you will get access to all the heroes and all the units and they will be in the exact same condition as your opponent. When you kill bosses, merge units or perform other actions in battle, you earn combo points that can be spent on special modifiers on the beginning of each wave. The choice of the modifiers will be the same for both players and both players have 20 seconds to decide what to go for. You can use them to strengthen yourself, screw up your enemy or purchase spells from the dock merchant. Some spells are really powerful and can affect the outcome of a match if used in the right moment. For every win you get, you will receive awesome rewards. If you manage to get 10 wins in during the course of the tournament, you will receive the maximum amount of rewards. For 500 gems, you can also open the special chest, which will reward you with a ton of the most needed resources. This is especially worth it for players that manage to get 10 wins, because this chest is by far the most valuable chest in the whole game, so make sure to save up your gems for that chest. During the tournament, you get a total of 6 tickets. Every time you lose a match, a ticket will be used. So let's talk about my top 10 modifiers. They are not in specific order, but they all prove to be very useful in certain situations. Deterioration. This is one if not the best modifier in the whole game, because it downgrades the highest unit on your opponent's board. I don't really need to tell you how bad it is if your highest demon hunter, monk, cultist or dark inquisitor gets downgraded. Meteorite Storm. One unit gets completely popped even through shields, so let's hope it's his highest damage dealer. Hand of Midas. Do you know the moment where you need to fix your board in order to not lose the game immediately? It's kinda hard if Hand of Midas is on the board and prevents you from merging out some units. Friends will upgrade a random central unit by a tier, which doesn't sound like a lot at first, but if you have a tier 5 central unit and it gets upgraded to tier 6, it's a lot, a lot of value you gain from that curse. Another modifier that just destroys a unit. So if this one hits a tier 1 unit, just let the tier 1 unit die and don't merge it out, because it will just spread within your board and make Maybe destroy a high unit. Shamans! We all know and love the shamans. It's a pretty brain dead modifier, uh, you just get his board downgraded and that's basically it. Never harms. Surprise! You get this one in the beginning of the battle very often and it's a great way to start out with because you get a lot of additional units just by setting up your board initially. Icewalk, the number one nightmare modifier for alchemists, trappers and corsairs. Not only it will speed up the wave, it will also destroy traps, bombs and many other things. Very very nice modifier, especially if you play against somebody that relies on its traps. Lionheart. It's very similar to the shaman, you just basically send a shaman to the opponent whenever you use your hero ability. Very annoying. Last but not least, the Dark Pact. You sacrifice two hearts in order to gain more mana throughout the whole battle. Usually, whenever you start to lose hearts, the game is over anyway, so you might invest two of them in the very beginning to get the mana advantage, so your enemy loses his three hearts before you lose your last one. What about the top five decks? Here we go! What makes a good deck? First of all, the ability to actually play it the way it's supposed to be played. And second of all, you need a good damage amplifier. Otherwise, your damage unit won't do too much at some point of the game. First deck I highly recommend you to go for is Monk with Sword. Unfortunately, Sword can only be used in one of the decks. And uh, it's definitely best used in a Monk deck or a Cultist deck, if you prefer this one. The second deck is one of the hardest to play, in my opinion, but it's definitely extremely powerful whenever you get the hang of riding it. You play it together with Witch. She can only be used once in one of your decks, so use her wisely. She has an insane synergy with Riding Hood and the Knight Statue. Summoner will give you the extra mana you need for this deck and Riot will give you the extra control to actually build up the few Riding Hoods next to a statue and next to a Witch and will do an absurd amount of damage whenever placed right. 
The next one really is a no-brainer. You basically just set up one chemist, three or four bruises, next to two statues and scrap everything. Some people ask why I go for two statues instead of one and the reason is very simple. There are several modifiers that can absolutely harm or even destroy a unit completely and you don't want your tier 6 statue to get destroyed and end up with no statue on the board. Second of all is everybody that played Scrapper and knows how Scrapper works. You will also most likely know the one unit that just never gets up upgraded. And if this one happens to be the statue, you will be in big trouble because a high tier statue is very, very important. So make sure to have two of them on the board to at least get one decent statue if everything else goes wrong. Demon Hunter, one of my favorite units in the game really really cool to play so basically you just want to get 40 units on the board and get a huge damage buff thanks to achieving this you have summoner and harlequin to get a ton of mana and you have dryads for the control and you have a decent damage amplifier called trapper you can also play it with chemist but i can't really recommend because uh, the slow comes in clutch sometimes the damage amplifier is also higher it's just very bad whenever somebody has ice walk but in the end you should mostly rely on your demon hunters to do an insane amount of damage anyways just make sure you reach around 40 demon hunters and you should be fine here we go last but not least the d blade dancer it used to be a trash unit and everybody that knows me knows how much i disliked blade dancer for being just trash in the current meta it's actually very very strong uh, you can even pay, play it on both sides, uh, left or right side talent, it's, it's amazing. It's just more reliable on the left side talent in my opinion. So you just build up your board with 8 blade dancers or 7 blade dancers, whatever you prefer. Just make sure you take the right side talent on the statue and um, yeah, you're good to go. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Check out the better prices in the Roche Royale market and use the code called like Mike, or just see what else I got. Either way, I wish you a lovely day. See you next time.